Alright, so in this little video, we're going to talk about the differences between series circuits and parallel circuits in terms of the rules for current, voltage, and resistance, and how we, how we determine those factors. So it's going to be pretty straightforward, kind of dry, sorry, I mean, there's only so much excitement when you're talking about the rules. It's, it's like saying, here's the rules of the road, it's very exciting. No, it's, it's not, it's a lie. Alright, so... When you're talking about circuits, there are two types. We've got series, which means everything is all in one path. You know, like the World Series is a series of games. All right, so there's only one path all in a row. But if it's parallel, well, you've got parallel lines, and they are next to each other, so you have multiple paths. All right, so the electron here has no choice. This is how I like to think of this. For electrons. And here, the electrons have choices or options that they can go down. All right. So there's several ideas. The first one we're going to talk about is the idea of current. So for current, since in a series circuit there's only one path and there's no choice for the electrons to go in, in a series circuit there is only one current. All right, so if you want to write that, it's like I from the source or the battery is equal to the current at resistor 1, which is going to be equal to the current at resistor 2, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so depending on how many resistors you have, each one will have the exact same current flowing through it because there is only one path. So you can only go at one speed. All right, it's like if there's only one checkout line, you're not allowed to jump the line. That's not cool. So therefore, you have to go at the exact same speed as the person in front of you. Now, if we look over here for parallel circuit, we've got multiple lines. So if you're going to go to a grocery store, you've got multiple checkouts. You've got choices. You know, you're going to pick the path of least resistance. You're going to go to the one that you think is going to get you there the fastest. Doesn't care if the line's the longest or the shortest. You're saying, wow, that one's moving. So I'm going to go into that one. All right, so you're going to make choices. So here we always have multiple currents. And these currents are based on the resistance values. Okay? But the big thing to understand is that whatever current, <clears throat> pardon me, you have the current going into a node. And I'm going to put a total here, a summation, because you could have multiple going in and multiple going out, is going to be equal to the sum of all the currents going out of a node. So what I mean is, let's say we've got two wires, all right, and they're going into this spot, and it's then being broken up into three different spaces, okay? Well, here's my, and again, so let's say this is the electron flow. And then here's my node. Basically, wherever you have a bunch of wires meeting is called a node. So whatever the total of all the ins is, that's equal to the total of all the outs. So you could have 1 breaking up into 10. You could have 10 becoming 1, anywhere along that spectrum. And so if you added up all of these values, they're going to be exactly equal to the current in these wires over here. So that's what we mean by the total current going into a node is equal to the total current going out of a node. All right, so maybe that visual makes a little more sense now. All right, so that's current. Those are the rules for current. Very important we understand the rules for current. Now, the other thing on the list is, let's pick new colors. All right, we've got voltage. All right, now, these are really... Uh, voltage drops instead of pure voltages. All right, and we want to understand well, well, how is the voltage being distributed among the circuit? And again, a decent way to think of this is voltage is directly proportional to energy. 
It is not energy. I cannot stress that enough. Voltage is not the same thing as energy, but it is directly proportional too because voltage is the energy per unit charge. The only things we're running around are electrons. All the electrons have the same charge, so you can calculate the energy loss pretty easily. Okay, so I just like to think of it like this. Well, if you're in a series circuit, you have to go all the way around the circuit. You start off with so much energy, and every time you do something, you're going to lose energy. I like to think of it as an optical course, because as you guys know, I like to run Tough Mudders. So I start off with so much energy, and I've got to do like 20 obstacles. I can't blow all my energy on the first obstacle. Okay, I gotta save something in the tank. So in the back of my mind, I know I can't go all out on every obstacle because if I do, I'll just die. All right, so what that means is that we're going to start off, all right, so the voltage from the source is equal to the sum of all the voltage drops uh, along the way. So if I have a circuit that has, say, five resistors in it, well, I'm going to lose energy at each of those five resistors. Now, I'm not going to lose the exact same amount of energy at each resistor because some are going to be harder than others, just like the obstacles. If I'm doing Funky Monkey, which is really freaking hard for me, I'm going to use up way more energy than doing, say, Kiss of Mud. All right, that's a much easier one for me that I can do. And so I'm not going to use up as much energy. And so it will not be evenly distributed at each resistor. Okay, do not assume it's going to be perfectly distributed. All right, it's going to be distributed based on how hard that resistor is, the value of the resistance. But whatever energy you started with at the source, the battery, the generator, that's going to be equal to all of the voltage drops at all of the resistors combined. Okay. Now over here, if you have parallel, you've got options. So it's like if you got to an obstacle and it says, well, you know, at this obstacle, you can choose. You can go down this path or you can go down this path. So whenever you have something in parallel, well, the voltages are going to be equal amongst anything in parallel. Okay, so if you have two resistors that are in parallel, those voltage drops will be equal to each other. So that means if you theoretically had everything in parallel, then the voltage at the source would be equal to all of the voltage drops because everything was in parallel. If you just have two resistors that are parallel to each other, because it's a more complex circuit, then the voltage drop at each of those would be equal to each other. Okay, so that's, that's the idea behind voltage. And then the last one, which is the one that we use the most when it comes to equations, green, is how do we calculate equivalent resistance? All right, so how do we calculate the equivalent resistance? Because what we usually want to do in order to understand how a circuit is working is we want to break it down into as simple an idea as we can and so that means that we have we're going to take all those resistors and we're going to ask ourselves if we replaced them if we replaced all the resistors in this circuit with a single resistor or even if we just replaced uh, two or three resistors with a single resistor what value would that be that is always my equivalent resistance okay all right, that's the equivalent resistance. Now, again, going back to my Tough mutter analogy, if I was to say, you know what, there's 20 obstacles. You're, it, it's going to be so hard. Okay, 20, 20 obstacles can be this hard. If you want, we can replace that with one obstacle. Well, how hard is that going to be? Well, since there is only one path, I will be forced to go through every single obstacle anyways. So if I was to replace it with a single obstacle, well, then effectively that obstacle would be the sum of all the resistors I was going to go through. Okay, so you might as well make it really hard. It'd be kind of boring and it wouldn't take as long, I guess. Well, maybe take a long time to be really tough, but it would not be as interesting because you're going to say, I'm going to replace all the obstacles with just this one obstacle. Okay, now if you go to the parallel side, it's a little more complicated. Because we have multiple paths, we have options, we have choices. So every choice you give makes the overall resistance go down. Okay, 
um, I think of this like a checkout line. Okay, and I said, you know what, or just any line in general, and you're, you you walk into the queue, and then it goes, well, okay, we've got these ten paths, pick one. Well, obviously, the resistance is going to go down, because you've been given options. This even happens in life. If someone says, all right, what do you want to do today? And they say, well, you have to do these things. You're like, well, that was a stupid thing, and you might be angry about it. You might give a lot of resistance. But they said, all right, all right, all right. you choose. All right, so we've got all these options. You pick from the options, and then you tell us. So you're going to see the overall resistance go down. So this is very interesting. So we're going to talk about this. Um, uh, we're going to derive this in class. And if you missed it, it's okay. It's not like the derivation is the end of the world. Uh, it's going to get you there. But basically what happens is you get this equation. All right. Oh my gosh, that's that's so unpretty. Give me, give me. I'm sorry. I'm just, I, I cannot live with that. That's just not pretty enough. There we go. So the one over the equivalent resistance is equal to the sum of one over all the independent resistances. So if you were to take, let's say you had five resistors that are all parallel to each other, you would do. 1 divided by resistor 1 plus 1 divided by resistor 2 plus 1 divided by the value of resistor 3, etc., 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 equals 1 over the equivalent resistance. Now, I will say this. This is where the students make the most mistakes, is that they forget. They'll crunch all these numbers on the right-hand side, and they'll get some tiny decimal. They'll be like, yay, I'm done. But they forget that's equal to 1 over the equivalent resistance. So you have to then take this and you have to invert it. So if you ever get a number that is less than 1, you might want to double check to make sure that you took the inverse of it. So a little more complex way to put this is REQ is equal to the sum of, man, I just 1 over R, all right, to the negative, to the negative 1. Okay, so once you get this value, you have to take it to the negative 1, and then you actually get the, the actual resistance. Okay, sorry for this ugliness here. Um, but, so that, that's another way of looking at it, but students will look at this and sometimes freak out. But conceptually and mathematically, this is what you are going to be doing at the end of the day. All right, so these are the rules for series circuits. These are the rules for parallel circuits. Hopefully, I did a decent job of talking through the differences and a way to process these ideas. All right, so these are the rules we're going to be using when we do all of our circuit analysis with math, and I hope it made sense. If not, let me know. Talk to me. And as always, have fun with science.